You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey you guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Queen Gaming. It's something you know on Twitter the Gaming Dragon today. I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Kimia. So before y'all jump right into it, before we jump into it, I'm going to let y'all know that our Patreon is now up for as little as $5. Y'all can help support the channel, get some awesome rewards like permanent access to our community Discord server and full access to upcoming non safe for work videos. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm chain, you were up, and let's go. All right. Brutus looks at me, waiting for a response. I point at my mouth to remind him of the medication, while being simultaneously glad to have an excuse not to respond. Oh, you can swallow. It's made with some weird nanotech stuff that makes you absorb it like a few seconds. The Brutus doesn't sound very sure. He's surely right. While the route of administration might be different from anti-nausea medication I've had on Ad Astra, the side effects definitely are not. I feel familiar fatigue set in behind my eyes, one that I associate with bloating due to that being the only occasion I took the drug. While I'd rather be more alert, I notice the nausea instantly gone, and I'm, all, I'm glad for this Kimian nanotech. And though I expect the taste to be bitter and acrid, acrid, it is instead slightly sweet and almost non-existent. Fascinating. I say it to myself, though Brynus responds with a face of disgust. I'd rather feel sick than take that shit. Makes me want to sleep all day. Pap takes care of motion sickness and all my other problems, too. Wolverine looks down at the large crates. By the way, you're rooming with me. I already pushed your stuff in. I take a look at Br I look, take a look around Brutus to peer inside of the small room with two beds on either side, one of which already has two identical metal crates next to it. Oh, uh, thank you, Brutus. It only, t it only makes me feel more guilty, knowing that he had hauled my belongings in first. Sure, I don't know why they dropped all our shit here instead of in the actual room, though. Yo, Wong! It's silent for a moment, and I wonder if Brunus failed to summon the AI, but then I remember how it works. Get me some pop! They destroyed my stash on that Astra. Brunus gives me a knowing look. Probably destroyed by that asshole magistrate. I bet he's high off his ass right now. For the sake of Ahatap! I'm confused by the sudden change of tone. Then I realize he's responding to something Alm said. I suppose there are downsides to having an AI only you can hear. You want me to list everything headache, backache, stomachache, heartache. Yeah, great, thanks. Brunus turns his attention back to me and looks down at one of the crates. Normally it would be levitating slightly off the ground through the use of magnets, though I suppose the floor is not compatible. Here, I'll push these ones inside. Sounds like you're in a great deal of pain. Brunus shrugs. Eh, I'll live. You just gotta give Alm enough reasons to justify dealing it out. I don't mind you helping, though. I grunts as I slide one of the cases across the floor, wishing that it at least had wheels. Isn't drug usage free and plentiful on Kimia? Brunus makes a snorting sound. That's what they tell you in wolf school. His knowing, condescending tone makes me furrow my brows. Instead of following along my emotions to take control like I did after ta talking to Nefru, I take a deep breath and let the defensive anger flow out with it. Snide remarks about wolves are something I will hear regularly, so this is a good opportunity to practice separating my emotions and my work. Thank you, y'all. Or time. Well, not told, but shown footage of addicted Kimians in the streets of the capital. Typical they'd show propaganda like that. Is it not true? Doesn't matter if it's true. What matters if, is what they're using it for. I decided to let the topic go at that point, feeling as if I'd know if I'd as if I'd successfully defended an Astro's reputation. At least for now. Bruce gives me a much louder grunt as he follows me into the room, pushing the last crate. Anyway, it does seem that you're in a lot of pain. I come to a stop at the foot of what I assume is Brunus's bed while the, while the Wolverine follows shortly after. Ha! <laughs> oh, one second. He, st he, st he stoops to catch his breath. Ooh, the arches are bad. I just get a script from the palace doctor. Aches are bad, not arches. Jesus. My slightly strained breathing is dwarfed by the huffing and panting of the Wolverine as he leans heavily against the crate. I don't like him very much because I'm not able to feel pain. As, because not being able to feel pain is kind of scary to me. But like I said, it ain't bad. Brunus sits on the crate, his sizable rear covering most of it. No, well, Pap helps a bit with that. It's mostly mental shit where it really does wonders for me. Keeps me sane, I think. Oh, and how so? I try not to seem interested. Even though we're not on an for the idea of a psychoactive drug like this is frightening. Well, I guess it kind of makes everything make a little more sense. I guess it slows stuff down so I can think through it properly. It sounds rather nice. What I like most about it is that it makes emotions feel more more meaningful, I guess. I don't know, I never had to explain it before, it just feels good. I raise a brow. Doesn't that get in the way of your work? I know he smokes the pipe almost constantly, so while I can comprehend using it for leisure, but important work on behalf of the parents? 
Well, that's the thing. I feel, I feel things better. It's easier to empathize, and that's important for diplomacy. I think wanting to inquire more about emotions and diplomacy, but I'm also unsure if I should be discussing such matters with Brunus. I spread the decision as a soundless drone floats into the cabin, this time extending a small black capsule about the size of my thumb. Brunus eyes this dispassionately before plucking the capsule rather aggressively from the drone. Thanks, this will last me a solid half hour. Oh, um, anyway, yeah. <laughs> Brutus uses a flicking motion with his thumb to open the tiny capsule. He shouldn't let personal shit get in the way, but it's important to empathize with the side you're negotiating with. I watch him pack the strange pipe contraption for a while, the Wolverine handling the flaky green concoction carefully so as to not spill any of it. Does it help with, um, distracting thoughts? I can't stop myself from asking. I have, for the most part, been able to keep myself in check for the better part of two years. The past hours left me feeling as if it all as if it's all about to fall apart. I realized then how desperate I am for some kind of solution, fixed to the, for this dysfunctional brain of mine. I suppose my approach isn't subtle, however. Murnus leans back and eyes me closely, his pipe held in one paw. <laughs> tired dragon is tired. It might. It's different for everyone. I know people that use it to focus. You're doing okay, by the way. Definitely. As you know, it's very illegal to possess such substances on an Astra, so I'm simply curious about this part of Kimian culture. Brutus continues to study me, and I try to keep my paws from fidgeting by clasping them together. Well, Pop is just a Kimian strain of Chronoma, which is native to Amorpha. Kind of funny that it's banned on an Astra when you guys borrowed so much from the cats. <laughs> Brutus winks at me to lighten the jab, even though it's too, I'm too anxious at the idea of this plant to work myself up over it. Anyway, if you really are interested, I can take you to an amorphan dispensary. The cats really know their shit when it comes to anything plant-related, obviously. They get a, they got a bunch of stuff that might that might be better for you. Ah, well, I don't think I would. Brutus can clearly see that I'm interested, which only convinces me to back out, back out of this odd, reckless attempt to fix myself. Well, I know that much of the education I received on the use of recreational drugs was simply state propaganda. I still feel deeply uneasy about it. Using a drug to patch over a mental deficiency like mine simply feels unwise. A few years ago, I once asked my doctor for an anti-anxiety script, only for him to tell me that he only prescribed sedatives to females. Even now, my cheeks burn at the memory. Just as I'm about to head over to my side of the room, however, Brutus sticks his pipe out toward me. Want a puff? I know it's not a wolf thing, but it'd be rude of me not to offer. I stared at the pipe for a moment, my curiosity rekindled. Besides, it might help you with your issues. If you got any, of course. Not saying you do. I stand and moving for another moment, knowing that the longer I do so, the more obvious my pup-like apprehension will become. So I make my decision to reach for the pipe nonchalantly. Well, my purpose is to understand the Kimian experience, so I suppose I should. I hold the pipe and realize I'm not exactly sure how I should proceed. Oh, well, alright, just take a pull on it. Hit your mouth first, then inhale that and hold it in for a few seconds. Brunus clearly didn't expect me to accept, and I feel some satisfaction at his reaction. I bring the pipe to my lips, trying not to let it visibly tremble. I suck on the opening, hearing a soft hiss from the pipe, then a gentle warmth filling my mouth. Ooh, ay, ay, ay. As I take the pipe away from my muzzle, a long curl of white vapor follows it. Yeah, now just breathe it in slow. As Brunus talks, I suck in breath through my mouth, and immediately choke and cough as the white smoke blasts out of my muzzle. Whoa! Brunus leans back and then forward to take the pipe from my paws. I double over and continue to cough. For a moment, I'm worried I'm about to suffocate because each time I take a, take in a breath, it hitches in my chest and comes back out in more coughs. But then the next breath comes easier, and so does the next. Brunus pats my back in a most awkward way before sticking the pipe into his own mouth. Guess you never, you never smoked anything before then, eh? I shake my head, too busy catching my breath to be able to tell him that smoking anything, even legal herbs, is illegal on an Astra. Alright, I sit down in the other crate, taking deep breaths and doing my best not to fall into another coughing fit. Well, it's probably best to leave it at that for now. Wait a few minutes and see how you feel. I nod, only now aware of the smell I associate with Brunus, with Brunus coating my mouth and the back of my throat. The flavor is rather sweet, not too terribly unpleasant. Still, the experience of my throat and lungs burning like they did just now, it just now leaves me unsure if I'd ever even want to try it again. Brunus leans back, watching me carefully as if worried it might kill over. So. What do wolves do for fun in a place where everything's illegal? I rub my chest, leaning back as well so I can breathe easier. 
Then Bob Burgess continues to smoke his pipe, seemingly unaffected by the warm, irritating vapor sitting in his chest. We, we have alcohol. Saying this reminds me that after learning from my doctor that sedatives were a womanly medication, that I should instead go buy some cheap drink in the market. It certainly felt more manly, boldly drinking an entire tankard of toxic-tasting ale while my friends cheered around me. It did help, at least until I began blacking out from drinking too much, and that frightened me away from it. Probably for the best. Brunus makes a face. But not the fan of this stuff. It makes me sick and gives me a headache. I don't enjoy it much either these days. I mainly partook to better match the mood of my friends on our nights off. This was partially true, but not the main reason. It also hasn't been the same since... Well, nothing has been the same since. Why do I keep telling myself that? Before and after. I'm a different person now. That Scipio died that day. Oh, I get that. And it tastes like shit. Sure, acquired tastes and all, but... <laughs> but it all tastes the same to me, just different shades of shit. I feel that only I feel that only now the conversation is beginning to feel natural between Brunus and I, like a conversation between friends. It is unfortunate that I am unable to respond, because I am dead. What? I died. And now I... And now... Now... What is now? I feel an odd tingling throughout my body, along with a tickling sensation in my thighs and groin. The sensation is similar to the one I felt when I was almost murdered, and suddenly my heart begins to pound. And I look back up to see Brunus staring back at me. I don't know why he's here, and suddenly very little makes sense. I don't know what's happening, but I'm able but I'm able to sense that something is very strange at the moment. No, something is very wrong at the moment. At the moment, or is it forever? Skip! Hmm? I jerked my head to look at him, trying not to appear as confused and disoriented as I feel. You feeling it? You alright? I watch the pipe bob up and down as he talks around it. I remember that in another time or another dimension, I was on a ship in the warp drive headed for Chemia. I had just taken a small but intensely hot and harsh mouthful of vaporized pap into my lungs. It was only for a moment, no more than a second before I coughed it back out. Alright, water time. I grip onto the cool metal edges of the crate, trying to ground myself to hold on to something so that so I don't drift into nothing. I try to remind myself of what is happening. This is Papaway. How strange that my cognitive state is so warped, yet I can still think in such a painfully clear way. This is nothing like alcohol. Suddenly I wish I had listened to all the warnings that have been given on at Astra. Well, some people were never the same after using certain substances driven to insanity forever. I try to remember if Pap was one of them, but a rush of fear begins to overwhelm me. I look to Brunus to calmly and politely inquire for assistance, though I'm not sure how I can be how I can be assisted. I need... Brunus's expression is hard to understand as context continues to escape my grasp. I am at least able to understand that his eyes are narrowed, looking almost suspicious or maybe even malicious. Did he purposely give me something harmful? He seems perfectly fine as he smokes the pipe himself, as if space and time are not breaking down for him. Yet I feel as if I am mentally decomposing. The frequent nightmares of dissolving the amalgamation have suddenly become fully realized. Despite this, I try to keep my expression stoic as a vague, past self version of me reminds myself not to jeopardize the mission. Or is this the future, where I have already disappeared into the timeless, spaceless orgy of hellish agony? What do you need? Bruce's voice is oddly deep and resonant. I shift backwards, unable to remember what I needed. Well, Alright, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and that notification bell. And Check out our Patreon if you can, it always helps. Anyway, before I uh, head off, I'm going to give a quick shout-out to my bronze tier patrons. Thank you all so much for subscribing to our channel. We appreciate your support. Thank you to our silver tier patron, Cade Silverman. Thank you for going a bit above and beyond. We greatly appreciate it. And thank you to our gold tier patron, Amr. You're awesome. We love you. Thank you for subscribing to our ultimate tier. Anyway, if you all want to get your name in the credits and get a, get your names in the credits and... Blah, sorry, I'm a little out of it right now. If you want to get your names in the credits, get access to our not safe for work contents as little as $5. And anyway, I love you all, and I shall see you on the next video. Bye bye!